Thank you for joining us for live paranormal radio. From the paranormal to the unexplained, it all happens here. It all happens here. Looking to enhance your radio experience? Participate in our live video chat 24-7 with our live paranormal radio show hosts and other like-minded people. Live. Paranormal.com, the only interactive social chat room supported by Full Interaction Media. Stop by now and join the fun. Stop by now and join the fun. Hello, hello everybody. This is Nikki Paranormal and you are listening to Paranormal Spotlight Radio on LiveParanormal.com. Uh, for any of you who are listening on the other platform, head on over to LiveParanormal.com. If you create a login, uh, you can join. There's a tab for that, and you can join us in the live interactive chat room where we are just waiting with open arms to welcome you to the Live Paranormal community. You can listen to the show from there. You can also join in the chat, which is ever exciting because I have my webcam on, and I am pretty well known for making faces. So you might want to come in, check it out. Uh, that's liveparanormal.com. You can read a login and then hit the radio player and chat. And uh, you can check out the insanity that will be my funny faces. And, you know, we've got a pretty interesting show in the works this evening. Uh, Rob from Live Paranormal, Mr. Live Paranormal, the most amazing, most wonderful, most fantastical guy, um, is my uh, the host of the show. And then I've got a pretty darn amazing guest who is just, like, absolutely fantastic. I absolutely adore this man. And um, that would be John Tenney, who is our guest tonight. And he is just absolutely awesome. Once you meet him in person, you will just you'll, he'll leave you intrigued. He will leave you asking questions that I still don't know the answers to, much like that that is the paranormal. Um, he is just such a complex, fascinating man. And uh, many of you know him from the show from TV, Ghost Talkers, or, um, you know, his uh, his internet website that is uh, Weird Lectures. And he's just a fantastical guy. But I'm going to go ahead and bring the most amazing, fantastical, wonderful owner of Live Paranormal on, Rob. Howdy. Hey, How are you? Hi. I am fantastic. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm tired, though, too. I spent all day doing a promotional tour for the Live Paranormal Supercon, which John Tenney will be appearing at this Friday and Saturday. And it, it, it was draining. I had to be on my A game, and here he is about an hour and 45 minutes from my house. And I drive an hour and 45, and then going doing a um, promotional tour, and then coming back. It's kind of a draining day. And I'm, a, I'm, and I'm sure. A You're not used to that, right? I mean, that's a lot of time in the no. car for you. I mean, I know that many people don't know where you're at, but he's about five minutes from, like, absolutely everything on the planet. So um, he will tend to do some of his phone calls from the uh, from the road. And, yeah, you, they better fit in that window. And if you don't answer the first time you get a call, well, then you're probably in trouble, mister. Um, so for him to be in the car for that long, see, for me, that's a normal drive. That's, like, my drive to Target. Okay, so I'm sure that was draining, but you probably hit some traffic, didn't you? Do you have any traffic going that direction? I I did. Um, Cleveland right now is real difficult through downtown, and we have something called Dead Man's Curve. And they're on top of being called Dead Man's Curve, which is just like its, it's normal name, they're doing construction on Dead Man's Curve. Oh, wow, so man. it's, isn't that it's, fabulous? It's like double Amy. It's uh, wow. It's not pretty. So coming home, I um, I was able to restructure the lineup while I was in the car on for the Supercon because I was I was just at a standstill. So yeah. I think that's amazing. It might have been you could you could do you do the schedule, and like I would it's choose right. to do my eyebrows. I right, mean, I, my I'm eyebrows great. are okay, and if they're not, I was already on TV they're not, today, so too late. Yeah, I guess. that's right. Yeah, that'd be too little, too late. The, too little, too late for sure. And you, you are correct. Being, you know, I do call you, and I, I admit oh, to. Gosh, I apologize. I'll call you. In the you case. give a sentence, and then you hang up. You go, what gotta you go. Think, I'm there already, and I'm like, where do you live? And I just can't uh, stand that. 
what you would think about this idea if, you know, I've got some ideas for the Paranormal Supercon, and then by the time I'm done saying, hey, I've got some ideas for the Paranormal Supercon, unfortunately, yeah. I have to get out of the car. Yeah. So It's true, people. It's true. Yeah, this has been really a very true. interesting uh, <laughs> last year uh, discussing anything related to the Supercon because it pretty much gets as far as, I've got some ideas for the Supercon. I, I'm here. Um, so, well, you know, it's, I, it's, I go, okay, uh, yeah. I can't, I can't complain because I'm conveniently located by everything I need access to. So. See, and I can't complain because, you see, I'm inconveniently accessed, like, everything. And that takes me, like, the closest place I have is 7-Eleven. And that it probably takes a good 10 minutes. And everything else is at least, let's see, the grocery store is 15 minutes, and then everything else is 45 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes away. So I'm sure. used to being in the car. So there's a lot of things I can do while in the car where you're like, two seconds, got to go by. I just well, at least you can you can get your slurpy fix. But it looks like our guest, John Tenney, is on the line, so we should bring him on. Yay. And yes. you already have given him a, a fantastic introduction, and he unfortunately he was not able to hear it, but he's going to take our word for it that it was fantastic. So It was pretty fantastic. I got it. It was great. Hey, John, That's are you the there? the man's easy to beat. He is fantastic. Hi, John. <laughs> Hi. I, I, I wouldn't was, believe you that it was fantastic. Oh, oh it was. You know, it was you so know much better than normal, let me tell you. Because <laughs> my introductions you know, that she gives me are so awful. No, I'm just kidding. We 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 have an ongoing <laughs> joke. Like, every single it's week. It's only funny it started, to him. It's, well, it started like four weeks ago. And I don't know if she was mad at me or what the deal was, but she was like, yeah, let's bring Rob on. And I was like, okay, that's kind of different production. And then the week after, she said I was some kind of uh, lovely or something. It was real awkward. Oh, yeah, um, I dropped a lovely. So, oh, he was really loving that one right there. I'm pretty sure lovely, I don't know it's probably accurate. Um, I'm, I don't think a lot of people would think of me as lovely. So we've been working on the introductions, and they've been getting better. But it seems like for the guests, they're spot on. When we have a guest, I, appre- I, I appreciate know. the I appreciate the term lovely if someone's describing me. I like uh I also, I like charming and dashing. Ooh, very good. I said you I were absolutely was... fascinating. You know, you leave you left me with that question. I still can't figure out where that dollar went. I'm still wondering about this from Scarefest about the dollar. That that, uh, that we can that, talk that, about that. Dude, You you will be in Erie, Pennsylvania this weekend, will you not? Uh yes, I guess I will be. Yes, yes. So I hear. We, we will, we will discuss it then. Yes. I can, I hope I find out where this dollar went because it's seriously <laughs> like it stuck with me. That's like my that's like the legend story there for Scarefest was the you know where does the dollar? So, but that's not the only thing that you do. You do lots of fantastic things. Thanks. I think you do. All right. Sorry, I thought you guys popped out for a second. No, we're, we're just we're sneaky. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're ninjas. Well, it's it's definitely um, yeah, it's great. I, I'm glad you um, decided to call in tonight and agreed to call in tonight because it's always a pleasure to talk to you and it, I'm excited to see you in three days. I it, I'm ex- I'm excited to see you guys. I'm excited to see everybody. It's like a fantastic lineup. It's going to be unbelievable. I think so, too, but like I always say, if I were to say it's kind of a crappy lineup, then what the hell kind of production would I be putting on? You know, I, I'm biased. <laughs> you know, right. Like, eh, it's all right. Yeah, like, I don't know, I guess I want to see the people. It's all right. You, know, you, you would think, man, that guy's not putting on a quality event, or he's a poor salesman. And I, I, I tend not to think I'm a poor salesman, but, you know, who would openly say they're, they're bad at something? So, you know, we're looking forward to it. Um, I'm looking forward to watching you go in and speak and me not being able to enjoy it, which is the downside of having your own event, is you can't enjoy anything. You know, obviously I'll enjoy... You can enjoy running, running around. You can you can, you can can try and enjoy running around and corralling everybody, making sure everything goes off without a hitch. Right. <laughs> doing the, doing, and what, what people, you know, don't understand, I, if they have, we're at last year's event, is I don't sit down. I make my rounds... Every 20 minutes inside the vending room, I go to every vendor. If they're not, you know, servicing someone, I'm not going to be in, um, you know, take away from possible sales. But, you know, I, I walk around and make sure everyone's got what they need or if they have any problems. And, you know, I've had a couple people tell me it's a little cold in here, and then I just give them a weird look and walk away. So, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. 
Um, and and yeah, and that care and that care and concern for everybody makes you very lovely. It does make exactly. me lovely. So maybe it is an accurate description. It's something I should use put on my cards. I'll, I'll, I will finally <laughs> produce a paranormal business card. You know, everyone asks me, "Do you have a paranormal business card?" I'm like, "No, you just find me on Live Paranormal, click the contact button." You know, so maybe I will. And put lovely. Put a little heart on it. Be lovely. You have to put the lovely. Be lovely. That way it's full circle. Any, anything, that's part of your title. Well, I always like to add the to anything because I think it kind of classes it up. You know, anytime you add the instead of the, it just gives it a little right. bit of extra, little class. You know, and it's, I'm all about class and class in the place up. So, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> people have been mispronouncing it the paranormal supercon. It's actually the paranormal supercon because it's just, you know, it makes it a little bit more dashing, I guess you would say. <laughs> but, you know, I, I guess we got off on a tangent of not talking about anything that was relevant to anything. Um, We're talking about the convention. That's pretty relevant. I think that's good. Pretty too. much. Yeah. I think so, too. Yeah. And it's a lovely where I was convention. Going with, where it is lovely. Where I was going with this is that I will not be able to hear you talk. Um, I'll be able to watch you walk into the room and make sure you're situated, and then I will exit. And I think that's well. That's you might be you, you. You might not be able to see my lecture, but I mean, you know, I love talking. So at some point, you're gonna you're gonna have to hear me talk because once I start, I can't stop. Well, as people know, I'm I'm a bit of a talker myself, so you know, uh, I've I've been known to talk at that. So it'll it'll be good. And we have the um, the function at Friday night, so we can just hang out there and talk and have fun and laugh. And you can tell your you're, I actually was. I, I know where Nikki's going with that because I was there for the same. I, I don't know if you would. Call, is that a joke or what? Whatever the proper term would be, but you know, it leaves you thinking. So I guess it's not a joke, but. Oh, it's just a. It, yeah, it's just a weird logic problem that I learned a long time ago, problem. and yeah, and all of it will be. Ex- I'll explain it all. I'll actually throw yeah, it in my lecture sure. too. Well, See, okay, Rob, I'm off during his lecture because I'm going to have to go. I had, look, this has been like almost a whole year now of me wondering <laughs> what in the hell the dollar went. Like, I've got to know. I'm sorry. Talk my pay, well, and, Rob. And I'm going you know what's, in. What's nice about this is we're actually giving away like a little tidbit of what you can get at the Paranormal Supercom, but we're not actually elaborating on it enough where people are kind of intrigued. Like, what are these people talking about? But you'll find out if you come to the event. So you can buy your tickets now through Thursday on theparanormalsupercon.com, and we, you can buy tickets at the door, too, to find out what we're talking about. So I think that, that was an a inevitable mention there. It was a perfect perfect segue. But So right. what, what are you going to do about? Well, besides coming to this lovely event, you know, obviously that's the highlight of your, your June, but for or July, so for July on, what, what else do you have? You know, at the end of July, August, September, you got any? Projects you can talk oh. about or anything. That I am uh, I am I am like the worst person to do my own promotion. Like I jokingly asked on Facebook for an assistant because like when uh, when I book events or even when I'm out and someone asks me what I'm doing, like I just tell them to go to weird lectures because I have to keep, I keep them all on my website. You would think I'd have a calendar on my computer, but like as soon as I book something, I put it on my website and then I know it's always there, like out in the internet because my computer crashes so often. At least I can look at it somewhere else but i have uh there's some events coming up all through august september and october i think there's even a couple in november and everybody can check them out at weirdlectures.com slash events and uh i'm doing at the end of this month actually um I, i'm doing one of my uh creepy coffees which is where you know i started out years and years ago just with a bunch of weirdos sitting around in a restaurant until all wee hours of the morning drinking coffee and talking about weird stuff and so still to this to this day, I try and do that a few times a year, which is I just invite everybody to have coffee and, and talk about weird stuff. I want coffee and talk about weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, people that's show up. Like it's really fun. To me. I mean, I'm like, where am I going? Like, cause that's, that's right up my alley. Two, two things I love, it's, coffee and weird stuff. Right. I mean, it's it's really cool because it really is just kind of that camaraderie that, you know, you you can get kind of only sitting around late at night drinking coffee. 
Um, you know, and people can float in and out. It's not really an event. I'm just going out for dinner and then I invite everybody else to come and have coffee and hang out. And so, you know, sometimes it goes from nine o'clock at night until five in the morning. Sometimes everybody's gone by midnight because it's a weekday and they have to work, but at least they can come and like exchange weird stories. They don't have to feel weird about the things that they're talking about. There's still a stigma attached to everything that we do. And I think that this is one of those things like your event and things like my creepy coffee. And and I think that's one of those ways that we can break down the stigma of, you know, that this is strange what's happening. The majority of people have strange things happen to them. It's just being willing to talk about it openly that uh, will get us somewhere. Well, and I think that's a valid point. And I think it's become less taboo as it, as you know, than it was 10 years ago. And, you know, I think, you know, being more mainstream does kind of help, you know, bring it out to, you know, people. And and that's the part that I like about the Supercon is and why we've decided to kind of keep it as a a lecture first production is that, you know, we had people come out and thank me for, you know, maybe opening their eyes or having a question answered or, you know, and, and some of these you can't answer their questions fully because no one knows the answer to it, but you can at least, you know, put some ideas in their, in their head and make them feel better. And, and, and there's a, there's a rewarding aspect to that. You know, there, there, as much as it's fun to essentially sneak around at night in the dark, you know, there's, there's nothing rewarding that comes from that as, you know, maybe just a fun event for, um, you know, investigating. But I think the most rewarding part is definitely when people come up to you like, Hey, thanks for putting this on because of, you know, your lectures and I was able to have a platform to talk about stuff I had going on. And, you know, it's, you're right. You can't just always go up to somebody and say, hey, I have this going on or this strange thing is happening or this paranormal thing is going on because, you know, it's not a, not always well received. But at for, paranormal- for sure. And, and you know, yeah. I'm, like, I, I, I've told people for years and years, you know, when I do my lectures, they're very open and they're very um, not really much lectures as, as much as they are kind of almost open discussion groups because I want people to tell me their stories. I want people to, if I say something wrong or if I say something incorrect, to fix what I'm saying. Um, when I'm at a table at a convention, I love to hear people's stories. There's a lot of people who get annoyed with listening to people's stories. Part of my job is is knowing how people think, what they think, what their ideas are. Uh, what their experiences have been, how they deal with their experiences. That's how I grow my body of ideas that I have about all of this high strangeness that people experience. Well, and I think that's, you know, I, I, I applaud the stuff that you do. And even like your, uh, at your convention, when you do your convention tables, you know, very welcoming. Yeah, I, I don't think you charge for anything, correct? You just... I usually don't bring merch with me. I usually don't like that. Um, I know that people have to do it and they have to, you know, make money somehow or another. And every now and then I'll bring, you know, a T-shirt or a poster design or something to sell. But I, I really feel like if you have, you know, dozens and hundreds of items in front of you that you're you're selling, I think it, it creates a wall between you and the people at the convention. They feel like they have to buy something. They don't, you know, they feel like they... Uh, have to they they're wasting your time if they just stand at your table talk to you and they don't buy all of this stuff that's in front of them and like it works for me you know I I, I really don't like selling merch <laughs> so it helps that I don't have a ton of it to sell um, or that I'll do limited edition stuff that way once I've sold a hundred of you know a, a certain poster I never have to sell that poster again I don't have to worry about it but also you know having a table where it's just me sitting at it. Um, it allows people to kind of wander over and say, oh, hi, who are you if they don't know me? Or, oh, hi, I've been waiting to talk to you. And, and there's a kind of openness that's generated by not having a wall of merchandise in front of you. So are you bringing any merchandise to the Supercon? I, I know people want to know. Um, I have, I, I literally have like five T-shirts. Uh, and then I have maybe a dozen or two dozen posters from past events, the Stanley event. I have a Realm of the Weird poster, and then I have uh, these kind of short-run posters that I did for friends of mine, which is like my face made up of Ouija boards. Um, but that's, I think that's all I have. Wow. 
Well, I think you just mm. opened up one saying that you only have five shirts because it's it's going to be almost like a Black Friday. I was going to say, <laughs> well, dude, if people don't have a VIP shirts. ticket, they better get it now because wow. those five shirts are going to go. They're going to be hot, okay? They only need to well, get, them, I, get in there early. Unleashing, unleashing the dogs on that one. The people are like all smashed up against the glass trying to peer in to see if it's going to be it's gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna, man. It's going to be like the wedding dress, you know, like when they have the, open just, the wedding dress for. And it's going to be like that fight, you know, the battle where the women are like, it's mine. I'm just hoping the fire, the fire marshal's not listening right now because it's going to be bad. Well, you know, it's funny. It's like I said, you know, I know that people have to do what they have to do. I have no problem with them doing it. It's just to a, at a certain point, it becomes really almost in like frustrating to me. Um, I, I did an event a few years ago, and uh, Chris Hemsworth was was there, who plays Thor in the Thor movies, and he was, uh, you know, charging to sign a picture, and he was charging two hundred and twenty dollars per signature, what? and I'm thinking, yeah, and I was thinking to myself, this is a this is a millionaire who's charging two hundred dollars for a photograph, and I mean, you don't talk to him, you, you walk up in line. Someone asks you your name, he signs a photograph of himself, hands it to another person, and they hand it to you for two hundred and twenty dollars. And I was that. I mean, it's just stuff like that. It just gets a little bit out of control sometimes. I think. Yeah, wow. it's, uh, um, yeah, and you know, and I think there's there's one or two people at every convention that you can see do that, and you know, it's nice that at least the people we have coming to our convention are very welcoming to their fans or friends and like, yeah, and, know them. yeah and absolutely like I said like I don't have a problem with people doing it I, I I understand that people have to pay bills I have to pay bills I have to figure out how to do it in, in my own way um, I just feel a lot of times like the reason I do creepy coffees and creepy conies um, I try and do one of those free events or I do a, a library lecture my library lectures are always free or my school lectures are always free I, every event that has a ticket price that I'm, I attend, sometime later in the year I do a free event to offset that price just because I know that people can't pay ticket prices to go to every event. Very true. So what, what you said there's the – what was the second one you named? There's a, there's a, you said there's something else besides the coffee. Oh, sometimes I don't drink coffee. Sometimes I'll invite people to eat Coney Islands, and so I call that creepy Coney's. <laughs> <laughs> that would it would go well with my uh, my whole spiel of why Cleveland has the oh, best okay. stadium. But, you know, you knew it was coming. Oh, I thought you were going to go there, but the bologna. No. Oh, oh well, that's not our thing. Okay. Nikki does not like bologna, and we have a. I don't know if you're familiar with oh. the Iron Chef, but we have. Oh yeah. Michael Simon. Michael Simon has this restaurant, and it's like ten doors down from my office, and he makes fried bologna sandwiches. It's the beast. Mm-hmm. Burgers, brats, and bologna, yep. and they're they're like I don't know if you ever seen you know the canned cranberries, how thick and oh, we have, we have a bee spot in my hometown. Well, there you go. So you and what do you think about the bologna? I think we're gonna bring Nikki a sandwich because she oh loves gosh, bologna. And what well, I mean, I I loved bologna when I was a kid. I'm a vegetarian now, but I loved bologna when I was a kid. My dad used to make fried bologna sandwiches all the time, and I, I used to think they were awesome. It's a Midwest thing, I think. For sure. <laughs> but, but, the, the but then that's it. I'm time. not the Midwest. I'm I'm the East Coast girl, so I really can't yeah. go there. You see, it would be like against well, the grain for my geographical. I will, I will bring you a bottle of the Burtman's mustard. I don't know if you're familiar with Burtman's mustard, but it'll it'll change your it'll change your thinking when it comes to uh, <laughs> keep waiting hot dogs. But what what you should do is if you're looking to make you know, making a lot of sales, just do like a uh, a talk with some kind of like boozy or something. That would be great because people would then open up their wallets and stuff more if they were were drinking. That'd be a third option for you. I always like to leave a mark, something for my guests to take away that possibly could they could use to business mark. venture, <laughs> if you will. It is every yeah. single week. I give somebody something. And you I'm know, still not, waiting not here, some... waiting for mine. And you know what? I get ignored. He gives all these brilliant ideas to everybody else, and I'm just like, it, it, one it, day I'll get it. People calling into the show, and one day I'll give Nikki her. So she'll have to call in as a guest, not as a host. So like, I'll, I'll give you a quick rundown. It's like Chip Coffee was talking about how he always has he loves socks and scarves, which we all know. And he, all, we, we figured that he should take his, you know, when you put your socks in the washer, sometimes you only come out with one. 
and then you're, you're essentially screwed. You have to throw that sock away. And I told him what you should do is bring those to the convention and sell single socks to your fans. And I think he'd make a killing. And then, you know, with Dustin last week, he does all of his quotes, and I told him he should come up with one of those calendars that, um, you know, you put on your wall and you peel off every day. And so you could have, like, a, a Dustin-ism or something every day, and people peel it off. Dustin-ism. It's like Dustin word of the day. So it sounded like now a medical I, I'm, condition, I'm, a Dustinism. Is that like I, a I aneurysm? Like a... I wasn't. I wasn't titling it. My my title was not spot on, but the whole thing. Uh, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, and myself. Um, whenever we encounter Dustin, it's our destiny instead of destiny. It's our destiny. So there we go. Now we just named it. It's the Dustiny calendar, and <laughs> we're gonna have to. It, Destination Destiny. Love it. It could and be a I movie. Think if you were to add a third option, which if you're not even if you're not a drinker, come up with some kind of booze or beer related option and that could be your third one that you do. You know, I, I used to at, at Scarefest at Scarefest one year had um I had three cases of weird water that were uh Ooh. I designed all of the labels for them and everything. They were made sure to not contain any government mind controlling uh uh, chemicals. They were guaranteed to help keep you hydrated when you were hunting for Bigfoot, chasing UFOs, or looking for ghosts. Love it. I do remember that. And, and the, the the weird thing is, um, so the past events I've seen you at, I've been at your table the same time that one of your followers has come and asked you to sign their bottle of water that year. You yep. already signed it, yep. the new year. And I don't know what it is with my timing, but I encounter that signature every single time. So, in, in much it's Coincidence. very, very strange. But Stalking them? Could be. It could be. Maybe I'm just always at the <laughs> table. <laughs> always eyeballing. Which which was hard not to do last year because we were literally across from each other. I know. Yeah, I had to keep averting my eyes so people didn't know about our secret crushes. Right. That, that was one thing. That, and then... We didn't want people to know, and yeah, I kept, you know, looking away, and I looked down at my shoe and looking up, and it, it was it was awkward. <laughs> that that and your your almost your as awkward camera. as being on this right here along with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll tell wow. you the, the worst part okay. of being across from you your banner kept falling last year, and I looked. Oh yeah, your, I, banner, your banner would be like half on and. I just if someone if feet. someone could figure out if someone could figure out how to make a banner that doesn't fall down or crease or like can be hung properly that you're you'd right. be a billionaire because mine is a disaster <laughs> everybody that I go to has they have duct tape all behind it and on it like no one's figured out a banner that actually like can hang and not be a disaster there has to be like a, a banner stand that you can make that does not fit behind you but affixes to the table somehow or like have the legs slide under. Thank you. I got my idea. Thank you. Now I finally can leave and I'll be a millionaire. I think we're going to delete this archive and kind of fine tune it at the Supercon and then come out with a great product because. I'll have it done by the end of the night. I'll work on the trademark (laughs) paperwork tonight. Uh, Thank you, too, Adam. We could do like a marketing marketing show. I know, <laughs> really. People just tune in and have brilliant <laughs> ideas. I mean, you, you, you forgot one of the most genius. Ideas, but, right, you call in, I give you your marketing idea. and um, the, What about the ghost soap on a rope? Hello? Yeah, that was the the week before. Um, Samantha Hawes, she makes soap as a design business, but she makes no soap that actually has anything to do with ghosts or ghost hunting. And I'm like, man, you're really dropping the ball with that. And it went from a soap mold to, I thought, would be fantastic was uh, a soap on a rope. So like a ghost soap on a rope, it, it should make a killing. Billion. Yeah, she, you could tell a lot of them. I have a uh, a friend here in Michigan who does uh, craft soaps, and they're super awesome. And when his Halloween ones come out, like he has a, he has like a Waverly Hills soap. He has uh, a poltergeist soap. He has a grave dirt soap. And I mean, they're they awesome. Know. They're they're super fantastic. But they're not on a rope. But they're not on a rope. Well, Maybe you can incorporate that idea with them. Boom. Yeah. You know, another one. They, they flow. 
I think oh the ghost gosh, soap on the rope is, is just... Talk about <laughs> weird lectures. This is going to be your weird business opportunity uh, reference. Go ahead. Right. I'm telling you, I, a lot of people don't know, but, you know, what I did professionally before I, I quit and did this full-time was I was in advertising from the 90s up until the mid-2000s, and I had to leave. I couldn't do I couldn't do advertising marketing anymore. It was It was sucking the life out of me. Well... You just you can't be on a radio show then. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, so you know, I think uh, what I wanted to bring up is we we all enjoyed your 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 show, Ghost Doctors. That was great. I I, I was glad to see. I, I was happy to see you succeed and have that you know out there so you could share your your passion with people. Um, you know. And I, I keep seeing on Twitter, though, like it, it's broadcasting in, in different areas and stuff. So yeah. it's kind of cool to see how broad it, it, it's gone throughout the, the, the world. Yeah, it's, I get, it's really crazy. Because I didn't even realize they had TV. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy because the, the whole concept, when, when Nick came to me and, and when he and I and Chad sat around and rolled it around, the entire concept for Ghost Stalkers was supposed to be just a long documentary. It was supposed to be three locations, but one kind, like one episode, just broken into three parts. And when we had, when we got to our third location and we're like wrapping up, they asked us to make three more. And we thought, oh, well, this will be two two kind of long extended documentaries. And then when everything was edited and put together, and and they started seeing it, the network was like, we love this as a show. Like, we're going to break it into six individual parts. I, I mean, I like Ghost Doctors for as, as much as I could like a paranormal show. I'm not a huge fan of paranormal shows. I think most people know that. Uh, I have my issues with how they eventually end up on television. Uh, I've never been quiet about my criticisms of my own show. I've always called out the things that I didn't like about it. But it was really amazing when it left Destination America and went to Discovery uh, International and they started showing it in South America and in Japan and France and England. I thought that was, that was really amazing. I kept seeing the graphics and, you know, it was called something different in, in every place that it aired. So, you know, if you got on Twitter, instead of searching ghost stalkers, if you search um, Le Portecales Hacia la Muerta, which is what it was called in, in, in South America and in Mexico, which was uh, the doorways toward death, or, you know, uh, in Japan, it translated into sneaking up on ghosts, which I thought was really funny. Uh, but, yeah, it was just so awesome to see it go re- reaching out to, like, a huge worldwide community. Definitely. I love the show. You actually, during one of the um, one of the uh, episodes, you went to a place where I used to work, Springfield Hospital Center. So that was really awesome, uh, especially, you know, to have been at Scarefest to kind of get the preview, and then when oh, wait, it was a stop. little you're breaking up a second. Let me get upstairs. You started it's to turn into a robot connection. voice. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm gonna try and get up high because you still sound like a robot to me. I'm gonna go up and lay upstairs. Are you there? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah we, we can, can hear you. I can fantastic. I heard a little bit as you were moving around, but. Yeah, yeah, I can't no, hear I you love... very well, and I'll use some like robots. That's Let me call you are... right back, okay. see if I can get a different connection. Okay. okay. And we will be right back with John Tenney. So, Nikki, I think it's great that uh, John Tenney has called in. Uh, I think Supercon is going to be fantastic, especially with such great people speaking. And, and in case you didn't catch it, you know, I think both of us really enjoy John Tenney and, and he's just a great great guy and a great lecturer so he, he puts it he in is and, and for those of you who aren't aware I put his website link um, some of his website links within the chat here at liveparanormal.com for those of you who are listening elsewhere head on over to liveparanormal.com and join us in the interactive chat where you can listen and join in the chat and I'm going to go ahead and add in his links again, and um, this, I'm telling you, this website, weirdlectures.com, it's just got some of the most interesting information. I absolutely love his website um, because I like weird stuff. Everybody knows that. I'm not normal, so I'm all about, you know, anything where I can find weird stuff, 
And um, so I put that within the chat room once again, weirdlectures.com. Everyone should head over and check it out because I just adore it. And, you know, John's got a YouTube channel that cracks me up whenever I'm having a bad day. I have to remind myself to head over because there's one particular uh, uh, little uh, clip on there that really relates, I know, to my life um, where he was doing his uh, voiceovers for Ghost Stalkers. And it was like, it was blooper reel, I guess, you know, and it was like real life to me because it was like every time he got he got ready to talk, like something happened that totally messed up what he was doing. And it's just so funny because I've been in that thing. Well, I just back. could really relate, and it was just refreshing. Hi, John. Hi, sorry. We, oh, we didn't no, you're fine. Show. I was just, we, we, I was just telling everyone you, so how you make me good. happy. That blooper yeah, reel is one of the funniest things, I and mean, I have hours I love of it. it. Oh, my gosh. Well, you need to release some more because let me just tell you, I could so relate. It makes me laugh every time I go look, and I could be having a really bad day. I should have done that earlier um, and gone and, and watched it because it just – I crack up because I <laughs> – and I've done some voiceover work, and when I go to do it, I've, I can't even do anything. I've run into the same problems, you know, the loud car or whatever. Or, you know, you say something, and then it's just like, oh, my God, this sounds so weird. And then you go back, and you listen, and it's it's just, yeah, I, I absolutely adore it. And like I said, we were uh, – I have hours of it, because when we were doing the narration, when Chad and I were doing the narration from Ghost Stars, we were doing it at our homes, and so I have a little recording studio in my house. It's It's not soundproofed or anything. And we would actually do the narration for the shows about mm, probably within 30 hours of the show airing on television. So it was just like this constant barrage of trying to get it done, you know, with by the time the show aired and rewriting it on the fly for things that didn't sound right. Or And so it was just, it became this massively traumatic thing when I had to record in a house, in a in a neighborhood at, you know, 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the afternoon when everyone's coming home from work. And so it was just frustration <laughs> upon frustration upon frustration. And I could so relate because I live right on a major road. So it's like as soon as you think you've got that, and I would do mine like 5 o'clock in the morning, like 5 to 5.15, I could try to, pee, you know, like piece in like as much as I could fit in 15 minutes because it was the only like quiet time. And even then, there'd be something like really, really weird that would happen and, you know, capture it on the I didn't like deleted it. It's that I should have saved them all because I probably would have made myself laugh if you could right. laugh at yourself, you know, like after, like Making well after yourself. the fact. Make yourself laugh. There's only that matters. That's, that's, absolutely. That's model, even though, right. even though you can, you can. I mean, I do say some pretty funny things in my bloopers, but there's, there's a couple. That what, the one that I posted is the completely closest I could have done to a safe for work version because the uh-huh. the next hour and a, the next hour and a half, I am dropping the worst. Uh, I don't even know how I piecemealed together Crazy. some of uh, some of the obscenities. <laughs> I do that on the regular as well. Yeah, so I can relate. Sometimes I, I, I impress myself with does. the amount of words I'm able to string I, together. I don't, know, and, I don't know how we don't have to put, like, an R rating on our show and explicit and all. <laughs> I, I don't know how she holds back, but, like, talking to her, like, when we're trying to do the Supercon stuff, and, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll, I'll bounce off ideas from her, and it'll be like, if you were to take the recording, it would just be beeps. There would be, like, it would be, beeps yes, in the band. Yeah. And then you'd get like Dirty an and Dirtiest sailor's and mouth ball. times 12. Right, an and and a the, and then a bunch of beeps and another, well, I think, and then a bunch of beeps. It's just, it, and then it on air, it's a completely different thing. It's bizarre. I thought, you know, to, well, speaking about ghost stalkers being in different countries, I thought it was really funny because in South America, our episodes were dubbed. And so Chad sounds a lot like Speedy Gonzalez, and I sound a lot like <laughs> Ricardo Montalban. But oh, the, uh, the, the dubbed... Uh, versions of Ghost Stalkers are bleeped for when we swear, and I thought it was funny that they didn't just not write the swear word for the for the for the artist to dub the voice over. They actually had them swear and then beep it out, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> the, the, they were true uh, to life. They read the script very well. <laughs> that's what yeah. happened. They read it very well. That's funny. That that's an in depth thought that I probably not a lot of people would have picked up on. So I definitely appreciate that, and and now my mind is blown. So we should probably just call 
Well, now I want to, like, Google it so I can hear it for myself because I absolutely loved the show. I thought it was fantastic. You know, you guys went to somewhere who, where I actually used to work, Springfield Hospital Center um, in Sexville, right. Maryland. So, you know, when I saw the little episode uh, premiere at, you know, Scarefest, and then I kind of, I actually kind of thought I might know just because uh, I have the pleasure of being friends with some of you guys on uh, social media. And I was like, what are you doing in my neck of the woods? And they were like, I'm not there. And I'm like, yeah, you are. They said, I'm just driving through. And I'm like, okay. And then the next day, I'm like, you're still there. Like, you're lying to me. You're up to something. I, I No, I'm not. I'm like, yeah, right. And then I find out. They're like, I couldn't say anything. And I'm like, you. Yeah, I thought that was funny. But, you know, that's I used to work there. And actually, I used to go in those buildings. And people used to send me in by myself. And I'd go in, no problem. And they'd stand outside kind of watching me. Because they used to store yeah, records for, in those buildings. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I had Springfield was one that I actually had um, uh, like a, a historical issue with because we were only on site for I think four days, and um, like the little bit of information that I had read up and researched for the episode, a lot of that didn't even make into the episode. And there was some there was a there was a, some stuff about Springfield that I didn't feel would should have even been in the episode, but this, you know, again, I've never been quiet about my unhappiness with the way certain things go out. I'm glad that people got to see it, but, you know, I do get annoyed when I see something, even on my own show, that I know isn't right. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know what, I'm very vocal about my feelings on things as well, and sometimes it's well-received and sometimes it's not, but, you know what, it's yeah, coming out she, anyway. She, she means she's very beeping vocal. Just the, the, That's the right. accurate, the accurate description of that was beeping global. A few more beeps at that. Right. That so, a couple here and there. Yeah. I and the sad part was I I missed your scarefest presentation. All eight people who were working a live paranormal table went, leaving me there by myself. Which which is is a standard for our operation. Is is right. very um, it's it's no man left behind does not apply. To anything that we do, <laughs> and it's it's all every man for themselves. LiveParanormal dot com. That that should be our our standard tagline. But I, I do. You're the big boss. You've got a responsibility. I I do, and just it's it's sad because it's I, I miss everything, and sometimes it's not even by by choice. And I only say that because I, I, I joke because we were at a mansion earlier and I was doing a an interview and no one came and told me that I was going to get locked out of the, the presentation. And so oh, they just geez, stand there and get locked out. And I took offense to that. And we did multiple man, episodes on the video in regard to No Man Left Behind. But, you know, why why, why bring that up now and have the feelings resurface? <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Everybody's drying their eyes record. for Rob right now. I know. It's so sympathetic. The, um, the Ouija Con post wrap up show, and I believe you'll get the details. Um, that archive is available on LifeRenewable.com right now. And uh, it's touching. Sad. You know. It is what it is. But, uh, <laughs> That's right. But I'm putting your links within the chat once again so everyone can know where to harass you. Because uh, I think it's important. They can send you one of those awesome messages uh, that you get. And, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you get some offers. I have some, some, some great emails. And, you know, that's the whole yeah. thing, though, too, is I tried, even though I'm terrible at responding, this is another thing about me uh, when I talk about needing assistance. I'm terrible just at responding to anybody. You can ask Rob that. He knows that better than anybody. Um, but I do love I do love getting emails. Like I'm I put my email out there. I tell people to send an email to John at weirdlectures dot com. Like that's my email address. Send me stuff. Or, you know, the fact that just find me on Facebook and, and friend request me. That's fine. Now whether or not I'll ever talk to you after that I don't know because I'm higgly piggly on everything. Um you know, in our internet era age, I don't have Facebook or Twitter on my phone. So unless I'm sitting in front of my computer, I don't know what's happening when everybody else is, you know, I'll, I'll post something on Facebook and then I'll look three or four hours later and people have asked me questions and it's too late to answer. And I don't think that people realize that there's still old men like me that only have the internet access when they're all sitting in front of their computers only. 
Well, it's better than if you only had internet access when you went to the library. I think that's a step below that. So, <laughs> or, or if you have like old block phones, you know that that's cool too. Or the bag phone is where it's at. Don't worry. Yeah, I, I wish. I once I found one when we were moving that. Uh, it was from like mid eighties. I tried to get it activated and they looked at me like I was crazy. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> Apparently, like we can't do that. Anymore. No, they're like, what yeah. are you talking about? I'm like, I'll pay anything. That's the no G network. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. It does amaze me when it does amaze me when I see doctors with pagers. I know. It's like really? Which yeah, because it's like you think that by now they would have just given the doctor a phone for the for the right. hospital, but no. Instead, they pay for both. They pay for the phone and the pager because it makes so much more sense, right? <laughs> right, and I was looking for like pager so service. For like at, at, at one time, like pre cell phone. Like if anybody remembers pre cell phone, like when it was all just pagers, like it, you, it got to a point where it was really cheap. Like they'd give you a pager and you paid like four dollars a month to have a pager so, service. And it was super yep. cheap. Now it's like super expensive. Now I think it's like a hundred dollars a month to have a pager service because there's only one like satellite that still does pager service. Well, I just I would assume that the doctors now still have the pagers because it would do away with the, the paging doctor so and so, and you can't take that away. <laughs> right. I mean, that's yeah, so great. Anatomy everyone. would be screwed without that. I'm you know, like having that ability sure. to reference. Right, you can't reference paging Dr. So-and-so, and that's the reason why they keep it going. I might be inaccurate on that assumption, but uh, I would say... I'll look into it. I'll research it. It may be, it may be pretty accurate. So you check on that for next show. Yeah, Not a problem. That, that's I'll research that's it. Great. That's something people like to say, paging Dr. So-and-so. And you take those pages... On the next... <laughs> on fun. the next Paranormal Spotlight Radio, with the history of pagers... <laughs> And why we still use them. <laughs> Look forward to that, guys. I am. Oh, my. I uh, I also forgot to mention that uh, if everything works correctly for this weekend at the Supercon, uh, my father will be making a guest appearance. Awesome. I, I feel like I know your be... parents. Ja- oh, yeah. Everybody will be able to enjoy the the uh, frustration and love, which which is my father. You know what the I sad love part that was? you posted earlier, reality. Earlier in the day, I had told my father he can't come. And then John was like, hey, I'm bringing my dad. And I felt really guilty. I'm like, you don't want to come. Yeah, I think more than anything, my dad is going to this event uh, to drop me off and get away from my mother for the weekend. Right. That would be why my dad would want to go, too. <laughs> We can get him Splash the Boom tickets. It's located right across the street. Go to the water park. Uh, there I don't you know go. if that's a thing, but I guess I'm, I'm plugging yeah. the... Uh, Splash Lagoon. Yeah. Who does Splash Lagoon? I don't. I don't, I I don't do public place. water. I'm sorry. So, so like, going in a public pool and eating bologna sandwiches, like, out of your... Yeah, well, I don't I do public pools, but usually I am, um, no, thank you. I'm a snob when it comes to that, baloney and bird. Well, you know what, there is actually a lot of stuff going on in Erie this weekend, so if he's looking for something to do outside of attending the premier paranormal convention, um, <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on. I, I think there's like Erie Shores, and, you know, it's being right on the lake, there's a lot of... Uh, I think that uh, at least for the attendees, there'll be enough going on at the convention for them. Uh, for my father, on the other hand, who knows what he's going to do. He's going to go yeah, all over the place was, like a madman. I was out of the place. But I mean, you never know. He, might end, up, he yeah. might end up talking people's ears off. My dad, I learned how to talk from my parents. So uh, he might show up and just sit down and... and Chew someone's ear off for you know four or oh, five hours. I want to talk to him. I I could well, talk no, really long and well too. So I could be. He can be like he can do a straight. He can do a straight up weird lecture on my youth growing up. We could do that. There you go. We can I'll make talk that to him. Happen. I'll interview him for LPTV. <laughs> Got in it. Depth, sit down. 
Yeah. I have no secrets. Anything he says is carte blanche. He can say anything he wants to. I have no secrets. Me either. Yeah, just let now. it out. Say that now and wait till we air the uh, special breaking story on LPTV, which is live for normal television. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I hope he comes. And, um, you know, if we find him interesting, we might even give him a lecture spot. He'd be like the fill-in guy. You know, you always got to have one fill-in guy in case, like, someone gets sick or someone dies or, you know, there's a tragedy. You need, you need a fill-in. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Dude, that, that went dark really fast. I know. Ooh. How morbid. What if he wins the lottery and he's like, yeah, screw that. I'm going to some island where I could see the, the, we, under the water. Yeah, I'm just saying he could be the backup guy. You know, if we if we ever, if someone doesn't show. He could be know, the ball guy. He could be the backup. Yeah, the backup lecturer. That's a new title. He can tell everybody, he can tell everybody about uh, drag racing cars in the 1960s and uh, chopping wood for his wood stove up north. Love okay, it. Topic irrelevant. As long as we have someone who can get up there and talk, topic relevant. That sounds like perfect. 1960s drag racing, perfect. So, I like drag racing, so and I like cars from the 60s, so count me in. I'm okay, getting all yours then, because when I, because me growing up with it, I'm I'm. You know how a lot of people are raised Catholic and then turn away from it as they get older. I was raised in 60s muscle cars, and when, as soon as I was old enough, I turned away from it and never looked back. Well, there you go. See, I was raised near it, but I went to Catholic school, so of course <laughs> I had to be into the muscle cars. So you know, yeah, send it my way. Well, I'll we'll talk. We'll, I'll talk his ear off. He'll talk my ear off, and then I won't be able to hear anybody else at the ticket booth. Um, so that'll be perfect. I love it. Sounds like a plan. We could have a, but we I am have a, skipping out and coming into your lecture. Actually, she wants to get out of working and come to your lecture. And she said that about every single person that's called in. I think she just wants to get out of working. So, oh, so yeah. let her get out of working. Thank you. Uh, the boss. I put John on this the one. She, I make think the call. John is cool. Make the call, Rob. <laughs> I don't know. This is putting me on a spot. and that's right. I, know, I, think flip it. So, I uh, love it. So, Bob John, when are you coming back to Life for Normal with your monthly broadcast? <laughs> well, we split the awkwardness. Oh, my goodness. My monthly blo- broadcast was a disaster. You could me. It was all live from me sitting outside of a bar. <laughs> What's wrong right with that? I don't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> I'm yeah, sitting I, in my I, garage I right now. The, I, I flipped the attention away from me and brought it on to you, so... The hot seat transfer. We can, we can, now we can, take that and, we can we now transfer it on to her if you want. So uh, bring it. No, I, I think I think the, the the broadcast was was awesome. I, I really liked it. So if you ever do want I to just, come back, I, the doors open. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's so weird. You know, I, when I did my first podcast slash radio show, that was in two thousand five or two thousand six. And uh, I really do like for a long time. I, I even with Realm of the Weird, which I did for a year and a half, which was you know only thirteen or fourteen episodes. I loved doing it, but I, now I'm to the point where I just love listening to radio shows and podcasts. Like I don't think a lot of people know. You know, I, I sit in chat rooms quietly and listen to 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 a lot of podcasts. I don't think people know I'm there, and I kind of like that. I and like hearing people just openly and and I don't know if I'm really meant to be the host of a radio show. Well, it's funny because I'm the complete opposite. I don't like listening to radio shows and podcasts, which is bizarre, isn't it? That I'm is just very kidding. strange. <laughs> I'm just teasing. You know, because and then you can always, you know, there's a lot of good shows, especially on Live Paranormal. So hopefully you spent 99% of those times on Live Paranormal and you have some kind of like Handle that we don't know when you come to the chat room, like Cindy one oh, or really uh, John Denny. That's uh, you don't have to there's some, I'm a, I'm a researcher, so there's some deep stalking that goes on. Right. That's right. And now now when when this thing twenty four comes in, we're gonna be like, huh? We wonder if that's John Denny. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Fang, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so making well, that name tonight. Sorry, guys. 
Well, it's been, uh, you know, it's great having you on. I, I don't know how much longer you have because I actually told you to come in for about a half hour, and I think we've tied you up for about 54 minutes so far. So That's right. <laughs> I've already lied. I've already lied on that duration, so... I guess Whatever you guys want. If you have any questions or anything, ask me, and then I'm I'm out. I owe you 24 minutes already. I'm not really sure if I want to tack on too many more, but we got you. So when it, when it comes me. to, I do, I do have a couple of questions that people have asked um, when I put the thread I'll, up. I'll, I'll give you a ten, I'll give you a solid 10 more minutes. Okay. Well, we'll only take up nine, and then we'll feel like we didn't. <laughs> He's got an extra minute you owe him. He likes to work right. that way. Right. Yeah. We're, like, we're, we're like giving. We're caring. We're, we're only going to take nine minutes of your time away. Um, but I, I did, whenever I put stuff up on Facebook, I, I get people who ask questions on my Facebook for the guests. And I, I guess we'll, we'll do this maybe just ask a couple of those questions, a um, little, little fan interaction. But it would be better if they actually came to the paranormal supercon and asked you in person, but we'll we'll still we'll still do this. Um, when it comes to like you're, you're investigating the paranormal, um, obviously you have a different mindset than a lot of people, and you mentioned earlier about not really watching some of the paranormal shows or you know wh- wh- whatever in in that regard, so. When it comes to investigating, like what what techniques do you actually agree with or try to that you use, or compared to something you might find ridiculous or something that's not warranted? Um, but I, I guess the question I, that people ask is like technique wise, what do you what do you believe in that is an actual way to possibly catch your catch paranormal evidence? Since it's obviously you know you don't know, but when it comes to right. your your rule book, what, what what's something that you actually will use and you find reliable? Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because I developed over the past almost twenty eight years now just a protocol. I still have a, a clients that I take on. I've had I have three right now that I work with, but the, the protocol that I work with is it's really laborious and it's information gathering more than anything else. I mean, if someone contacts me. We have multiple contacts, either by phone or email exchanges now. Um, used to be letters, believe it or not, back in the day. But uh, there's multiple contacts. And then if it seems like something is warranted to start investigating either their home or an experience they're having, uh, then I start researching genealogy, genealogy of the family, um, history of the family. I'll, I've two of the clients that I have right now, I pay for them to go to counselors and therapists, and I still haven't been to their homes yet. Uh, it's a month-long, if not year-long or years-long process of investigation before I even get on site to the location um, and trying to determine everything and anything that could be going on before I get there and, you know, claim that there's something supernatural happening. The majority of the time, if you take your time and do your hard research and pull topographical maps and old plat maps from locations that you're going to, you you find out where everything's at. You pull the former ownerships of the homes. This takes time. A lot of people will get a request and immediately run into a house, and they're basing their experience uh, of investigating in a home off of uh, minimal interaction with the people who are already in the location. And so you go in with a certain amount of bias, and, and that's not something that people do on purpose. It's just something that happens naturally. And over the years, I just am very slow and methodical. It's the reason I don't have a lot of clients, actually, is people want an immediate response to their problem. And If I am investigating something, I'm doing it as thoroughly as possible, and so it takes me a long time to investigate. So, I mean, that's something I do. I don't use a lot of devices. I mean, if I do use devices, it's it's to use them in a manner for which they were meant to be used. You know, if I use an EMF detector, it's to check and see where there's high electromagnetic fields in the house or where there might be dirty electricity sneaking through an outlet or... um, you know, but I don't use a lot of of equipment. If I do an EVP session, I tend to use analog re- cassette recorders, which are what I've used for the past 28 years and have always seemed to work best for me. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, I'm very old school. I, I, one of the reasons I don't watch a lot of shows, one of the critiques that I have, even with my show, is that people get the idea that you just immediately run to a location and investigate it. And I don't think you get a lot of usable data and information by doing that. Well, I, I agree with you on that one. I don't even have a follow-up because when I agree. <laughs> it, you, you gave me no follow-up. So I'll move on to the next one. I'm trying to pick on which, which ones here. Someone had asked why they sometimes see you as just John Tenney and sometimes they see an E and an L there. So they want to know what that stands for. Oh, sure. Um, there's a... All the Tennies in America are related, T-E-N-N-E-Y. We're all distant cousins through one common relative. And uh, when I started working for television shows back in the 90s, just as a researcher and as a writer for shows like Unsolved Mysteries and Sightings, there was an actor whose name is John Tenney. And so when I was doing things professionally, um, it was better for me to separate myself from him so people wouldn't get us confused. They still get us confused to this day. But um, E and L is just my – I'm named after my father, John, his father, Elmer, and his great his grandfather, Leonard. So I'm just John, Elmer, Leonard, Tenney, and then the E-L is just so people can figure out what's me and, and who was the guy that was married to Terry Hatcher. Right, so it's not Spanish for the – No. Not at all, even though some people have done that. I've showed up at conventions, and there's been a placard that says John L. Tenney, John the Tenney, which I guess is the fine Tenney. by me. But Right, the Tenney. It would be the Tenney because obviously that would clap. Exactly, the Tenney. I like that. That's what I'm going to call you, the Tenney. Because there's, <laughs> there's no other one. It's just the Tenney. Most people no just call me cat. Tenney, actually. It's it's pretty funny, but John being so common – uh, usually at events, you'll just hear people screaming, you know, when they want to get my attention, you'll just hear Tenny come across the entire thing. It's it's not as proper as the Tenny, though. I like that. <laughs> well, I mean, if you said there's, a, you know, with all the Tennies out there, if you were Z1, you know, that's, that's quite the honor. You know, it sounds a little too hoity-toity for me. I'm not the most upper-crust, classy guy in the whole world, even though I, I somewhat seem to be sometimes, but I think it's just because I'm a... Uh, a little shy and odd, and I don't mean to uh, put off that air, but the Tenny just sounds a little too, bit too formal to me. <laughs> a little much, but... Well, I, I, it's been eight minutes, and I did have one more question, so it's up to you if you want to sure. answer. That one. Yeah, go ahead. Now, and I actually had this presented to me today on air. Um, I went and did a promotional tour for the Supercon, and... I had to stand and think about it for a second. Like when it, and the question was asked to me is, you know, with the paranormal, th- there's no really set answers yet. You know, it, it's it's all guess, and you know, there's not a lot that we know for sure. Um, what do you call, you know, your panelists or people who come out? Are they enthusiasts? Are they experts? You know, can there be an expert in a field that doesn't necessarily have any confirmed answers? Because some people, you, you just, you know, you, you, some theories and stuff, you just, it's hard to determine if they're accurate. So when you talk about the paranormal, do you, do you use the word expert? Do you use, and then for the fan base, do you call them enthusiast, hobbyist? Well, what would be your ideal term to use? I guess that's uh, the, I mean, kind of the you know, question for, my, for myself. Out. For myself, I always just call myself a lecturer or a monologist, just someone who talks. Um, I do think that you can have experts in this field. I think you can have experts in any field, uh, dependent upon knowledge, time spent in researching and investigating, um, the amount of, of information and data that they give back to the community. I think that you can have an expert, absolutely. You can have uh, you know, an, an expert um lawnmower uh, and it just means that they've done it for you know 30 years and, and they know how to do every lawn and they know how to hit every curve and and they have a, and they have a good knowledge base as to how to do it uh, i think that too many people jump on the word expert as though it means something uh, i've done this you know I've, I've had people call me experts i don't have a pro an expert in the paranormal i'm an expert in the historical context of what paranormal phenomena is. I mean, I, I, that I, I would call myself an expert in that, but I don't know. 
uh, I mean, I'm a veteran researcher at the point I'm getting to 30 years of doing this, but most of the time I just call myself lecturer. I think titles are, are, are very wonky sometimes. In our community, you have a lot of doctors and PhDs, but their doctorates and their PhDs have come from non-accredited schools or there are people who are licensed and certified that are just being licensed and certified by other people who are giving them license and certifications. If someone listens to every episode of Realm of the Weird, I'll send you a certificate of weirdology. It doesn't mean that you're actually certified to do anything or that you've studied anything. But, and so I, I think that you know people should just be happy with who they are, happy with their knowledge base, not try to be an expert in anything. And uh, you know, a genuine passion, true love, understanding, um, and openness to, to strangeness will eventually make you an expert, whether you want people to call you one or not. Well, that's, that's definitely well put. Um, you know, and, it, and, you know, it's really to each your own. I, I was just trying to relay the question as much as I could break it down. Um, so, you know, and, and I think, you know, definitely people are enthusiasts or, you know, I, I don't know if hobbyist is the correct term when it comes to paranormal researchers and, and whatever, but, you know, if you have a definite passion, you know, I, I think it's something that is good to explore, you know, the passion. And, and, and this platform gives you a way to, you you know, our our event or websites and not even, you know, liveparanormal.com, which I obviously run and I endorse and love and put my hard work into probably 40 hours a week. You know, but th- there's other websites out there that you can get information from, and I think... You know, as long as we keep doing that, it gives people a platform to find information and, you know, keep yeah, for sure. the research alive. And like alive. I said, like, uh, like I said, you know, it's, it's weird when you say expert, uh, how do you mean expert? Like I was saying, like, you know, if, if, if it comes down to it, like I, I truly believe myself to be, and probably if you asked other experts, uh, people who are, you know, credentialed or recognized as experts, I consider myself an expert lecturer but I only consider myself that because I've done thousands of lectures to hundreds of thousands of people over the past 25 or 26 years, almost well, 20, almost 28 years. Um, and so just doing it over and over again, I've gained a certain amount of expertise in doing lectures. Um, but again, it's just these ways that people qualify and quantify who they are. I'm very happy with who I am. If no one ever called me an expert, that's fine. I, would, I wouldn't care. Uh, I know it in my brain what I'm an expert on, but I would never proclaim myself to be one because I really don't care what uh, I really don't care about the title. Uh, I, I care about exchanging and sharing information with people and constructing new ideas with them. That's what's the truly important to me. Well, well, being V10 is probably good enough, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well. I definitely appreciate you uh, you calling in. I look forward to seeing you in in three days, and um, yeah, that's definitely been a pleasure. Three days away, it's sneaking up fast. I keep saying six months, and that's not relevant anymore. And I keep thinking, hey, six months, and I'm like, she's like, hey, you know what? You got it next week. Um, then the next three scared. days, and right, I'm scared. probably calling Thursday. Like, hey, six months from now, we got the Paranormal Supercon, and it's gonna be tomorrow. I don't know. I, I apparently I've been abducted or something in my mind only goes and I keep thinking I've been such a way. I had nothing to do with it. No. There's something to <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> well thanks for having me on guys. I love it. Well thanks for calling in. Thank I you. will uh see you shortly and I definitely uh appreciate your time. And your extended All right. time. I will talk to you guys and everyone and that's listening in uh three days. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. Well, that was the lovely John Tenney. And, uh, it's, you know, it's always the dashing. Talk. Dashing, lovely. The, the Tenney. And yeah. uh, he, he's a fun guy. It's always good talking to him. So. I Definitely. Excited to see him I'm excited to see him and the other fantastic people, the other lovely people who will be at the Paranormal Supercon both the, the, guests, the vendors and the attendees. And I'm excited to see the attendees. Um, I think everyone who I met last year is coming back this year, which is a good sign. You know, I had people come, did not <laughs> yeah. come back from last year. And they're like, I had a crappy time. Um, 
that would be. I didn't hear that once, though. I did not hear that once. All I heard was people saying what a great time they had. And, um, you know, I don't think they were just saying that to be nice because, let's be honest, no, people really don't, don't like really care to be nice to me most of the time. People actually aren't very nice to me a lot of the time. And um, nobody had a complaint. And, well, I tend to be the complaint department for most people. So, no, it was a good time. Well, it, it, so, being an expert you know. complainer, I think that would be qualifies you as the uh, complaint department. I'm an expert in nothing, and I only an make expert. myself an expert in calling know. people out who claim to be. Expert, expert complainer. Ex- expert swear. Let's not go there because, you know what, we will, we will have some words said that won't be very friendly, and I don't want right. to make that. Well, well being, being an expert swear word user, I think that would only be natural. But That I, might, I, I, I might I, classify I, myself as. I'm pretty sure expert in multiple uses of the F word. Yes, right. And before I drop any, we better go ahead and don't let's not get these started. Not to, not to have to mark this as an explicit show. Why start now after our guest is already? I have had one explicit show. I've had one. Was that the F the mother F the mother effort show? No, it wasn't even my fault. It wasn't even my fault. Actually, it was it was the uh, I was at an event. It got out of hand. It got out of control. Oh, it was crazy. And it was okay. marked adult. We've, we've ruined people's careers around life during all because of interviews. I'm just kidding. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. But uh, anyway, back to the Paranormal mm-hmm. Supercon. It's great. Yeah, like you were saying, there really was no complaints. The only complaint that I got, and I had brought this up earlier, was a gentleman said he was cold. Now, dissecting that, I don't think that's a legitimate complaint. I think it's... It's called get a sweater and get over it. I'm sorry. That's just my way of thinking. That's why I don't own it. That's why I don't run it. Right. Now, he's like, I had a great time, but I'm going to tell you it was a little bit cold. (laughs) Oh, my God. Okay. So the complaint department field had one complaint that it was cold. So I'm going to go with a successful event, if that was my only complaint. And... uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to see the, like I said, the, the people in attendance who keep the the events going and wanting to come out. And I'm excited to see them, the, the guests, the vendors. It's going to be it's going to be fun. You know, we we fine tuned the lineup today, and um, it, it's really the lineup was the same. We we added in a couple people. We we've snuck out to a couple of conventions over the past probably three months, and we've picked up a couple of people who we could not deny speaking time to because they're either really friendly or really awesome mm-hmm. speakers or maybe both. And so we had to kind of rework it around to add in some other people, and I think uh, that goal has been accomplished. So we have no breaks throughout the two days. Mm-hmm. Both rooms will be going yeah. nonstop. And uh, breaks with the babies. That's what I always say, and so I'm running my event that style. And, uh, you know, we're not taking a break in either room. The, the vending room and would never have a break, but you know, we, there's a couple of downtimes in the lecture rooms, not during the same time, but we're just going to run them consecutive all day long, both days. So, you know, it's still 38 speakers, and uh, it's it's a lot of information. It so, is. Uh, so get your brain ready. Start, you know, get your get breakfast your uh, prepared. Get get everything ready. Get your pen because you're going to take so many notes, you just might run out of pens. Like your ink will be gone. Yeah, you might bring two pens, or two pencils and a sharpener, because it would you're going to get that first pencil all the way down to the bottom. It's that much. Definitely. Oh yeah. We we can actually probably sell folders and uh, pencils. We'll have to run out and do that because it'd be great. They would pick up a couple extra dollars because there's that much information. And, and, and all kidding aside, though, that the lineup of speakers is great because it's so many different topics within the term paranormal and metaphysical too, and you know psychic. So we have ghost hunting, we have UFO, Bigfoot, metaphysical, um, some psychic presentation. So really. There's something for everybody, and uh, you know, and, and really, we, we, you can pick your your perfect 
your perfect day because you can pick, pick and choose. Pick your paranormal day. poison because it's up to you. You. It is. And then if you everything there is a great, a perfect potion. You can buy one of John Tenney's remaining five T-shirts, or I recommend buying one of the new live paranormal T-shirts that we will be debuting for the Paranormal Supercon, or one of our prints that goes for a special price if anyone's a VIP, or you can buy it if you're not a VIP. But everyone's a VIP in our hearts, just to, to they have the, the VIP pass. Yeah, let, let's, let's make right. that clear. Um, Most definitely. Right. Everyone's a VIP in our hearts. But you don't buy the pass, you don't get it. Um, so we, we have a, a special uh, print that we're going to be selling that's limited to 100. And uh, that print you can get autographed by everyone in attendance. And we have a white and black version of our new Eat, Drink, and Live Paranormal by LiveParanormal.com t-shirts that was the the brainchild of Nikki Paranormal. And uh, we ran with it, so hopefully that, that shirt debuts specifically for the Supercon. And if we have any left, we will sell them online, but I don't know. I think it's going to be a hot ticket. I was just saying that I said they didn't come today for my uh, my TV stuff because I wanted to wear one, but I finally did break down and wore a live journal t-shirt in uh, the production, which I, apparently is, is, is common knowledge is uh, I do a bad job at. So I want to thank everyone for leaving their comments that I finally wore a live journal t-shirt, which if you look at the picture I posted on my Facebook of me doing my Wizard World presentation, I'm wearing a live journal hooded sweatshirt. So... They're unwarranted. Um, occasionally, I may not wear a live panel t-shirt, but it, it, it's out of control by thinking I don't. And I want to thank Nikki for telling me to wear the live panel t-shirt because obviously it was going to do. I know. I'm, I'm, if you listen to me more often. Last night, you're like, hey, don't forget to wear that live panel shirt, dummy. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you need to wear your live panel shirt. And actually, I had my stuff all laid out to go, and it was not my life or almost hurt. So I made the adjustment, and it worked out really well because on the entire segment, you can clearly read the live or normal. So it was a good call. You know, but sometimes on these uh, productions where they won't let you wear labeled T-shirts, I have been able to sneak them in here and there, but sometimes they make you, you know, just go with a standard color T-shirt, so... No, but it's always nice when you can work a bit. So what what do you think we should cover here with all this stuff going on with the Supercon for the remaining extended 13 minutes we have? Well, let's talk about the investigations because those are definitely a hot ticket item and it's a limited availability. So if you are lucky enough to still be listening and attending, you want to go ahead and get those. So why don't you tell everybody about them? Yeah, there's not much availability. I'm pretty sure I, I I checked right before the show just because I had a couple of people ask me about them and they did not purchase them yet. So there there's really I think about twelve tickets that people uh, there's twelve people who want tickets but there's only four spots. So it's first come, first serve. Um we have two investigations that are part of the Friday Saturday deal, which is Friday night is at the Hemingway Ballroom at the Ambassador Center. Um, that's with, we're going to do a special investigation uh, group spot with Chip Coffee, and then we'll do um, a little free-for-all for the remaining hour, and that is from 11 until 2 a.m. on Friday, and then on Saturday we have a five-hour investigation that will be at the Waterford Historic Complex, and that's three buildings. It's the Eagle Hotel, the Judson House, and the historic Waterford Museum, which is cool because there's a lot of uh, relics from the area and the, uh, the wars, and it, it's uh, it's the the great theory of you know items being having attachments. You know, it is is a, a very relevant theory, and this place has a lot of great relics. So you know that that's that's a sure sure fire. Don't miss that. And the Judson House. I, I, last year we did it, and there was people running out screaming. They got so scared, which was bizarre. But you know, apparently they saw a full body apparition, and uh, that has happened multiple times. And it's 
you know, great. I, Nikki was not available to witness any part of the Judson House last year. I had her in the basement, which she's told me was not the most desirable place to be at the Eagle Hotel because she was telling like she was stuck in the basement, which she literally was. Um, so you had three buildings, the Eagle Hotel, the Judson, and the museum for Saturday night. And then Sunday, if you're a live paranormal follower, you know on live paranormal TV, we have been to the Kingsville Library and Old Schoolhouse multiple times, and we will be back doing live paranormal TV, and we are selling a few tickets for that event, so you can come out and actually investigate the spot that we've been to multiple times, and I'm looking forward to all those. Me too. Can't wait. Not be stuck in a basement again this year. I was just at Pennhurst bringing everybody um, a live investigation from the outlet. Um, therefore, I was around enough dust, dirt, grime, and all sorts of debris and native with sinus wise. Um, I don't think that it would be very good for my my breathing to do that because I think you kind of need uh, a warm body to do the. Uh, investigation that I'm scheduled to do for Sunday. So let's let's make it so I can breathe a little, please. All right, maybe the attic this year. Or maybe the Judson mm-hmm. House. We'll, we'll, maybe the Judson. Mm-hmm. I feel a little <coughs> ill. Maybe I won't make it at all. <laughs> get 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 the black lung. I probably already have it. I'm working on it right now. You, ne- you never know when you get the black lung. Mm, yeah. Sorry, I, whenever I can throw in a, uh, a quote from Zoolander, I, I can't help myself. Yeah, it's a very popular movie amongst those within the paranormal community, actually. I know Grant Wilson was doing his impressions of uh, Zoolander. It was rather enjoyable. Well, and our guest last week, Dustin Perry. I didn't realize that he was a fan of the uh, the Zoolander quotes as much as I was until we were both in Manhattan mm-hmm. in the green room and they had a, um, a miniature, I guess, scale model of the building. And uh-huh. I looked at him and I was like, what is the center for ants? And he's like, oh, man, Zoolander, that's the uh, funny movie. He's like, I, I love using those references, you know. And I have to thank you for that, Rob, because you actually opened my eyes to the Zoolander um that is Zoolander. You you both the eyes because I did not see that until you you, know, you a, recommend it. If you don't know about it, yeah, you don't realize what a great movie it is for stealing quotes from. This is true. It's a great movie. It's really it's really fantastic for quotes. Um, it is. I, I, it's I'm, not really it, paranormal whatsoever, but it's a great movie. No. To check it out. But on a daily the basis, the with your quotability quote, at the super. Quotability is high. That's right. There, there's there's a certain right. movie, especially the ones that I like, that I think are 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 they're really good for quotability. You know, is the storyline good? I probably don't. You know, probably not. You know, but it, are there quotes that you can take from it? I think is a lot of times what I what I look for in a movie. So you know, when we talk, I occasionally will bring up something from Tommy Boy, Zoolander. You know, some of those are quality quotable movies. Storylines, not so much. But right. Not really sure that that's radio appropriate uh, discussion because we kind of trailed off into something irrelevant to Supercon, but maybe we can it do a happen. screening. It does happen. Especially uh, after you've done a whirlwind tour of uh, promotion. For the end of the day, I think you kind of uh, phase out. I mean, I can talk about Supercon all day long, but at a certain point, it kind of... We usually do, actually. Um, we do talk about Supercon a lot, and so I'm concerned about we'll have nothing to talk about once we're done with the uh, event. Mm. Oh, well. Uh, it's been nice knowing you. The 2016 version. Because that's going to be great. If I, can take the, if I can take the punishment... It's not that bad. It's fun. Plus, it's it's rewarding. Just having seeing the people come and the, the shirts, the the excitement, getting there, and then it's like Christmas morning for the, the attendees, and, and that's what really is the most rewarding part. 
That is the most rewarding part, I have to say, most definitely. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not really, I, I've appreciated it. I've gotten a lot of, there's been videos that have been posted this week about people being so excited to come. And I definitely appreciate that. And we were trying to show it to them. I've had like four or five people make videos and or post videos about being excited to come to SuperCon. So, you know, that's definitely cool. And uh, I, I know we're going to deliver. We're going to deliver a, a quality paranormal event. And uh, you should, if you haven't checked it already, paranormalsupercon.com. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on. And I think we need to just spend the last couple of minutes talking about even the psychic portion, how we have so many people doing readings. And I really, uh, you know, we're doing the, what do we call it, the Super Psychic Fair as part of the Paranormal Yes. Yes. So if you're, you know, in, in what we're going back to, we're trying to talk about how we're offering something for everybody. You know, some people, you know, like to go saying stuff. People might just come out because they're interested in getting psychic readings and talking to a psychic. So, you know, we have almost like a mini psychic fair within the Paranormal Supercon. So we have the Super Psychic Fair, which is part of the Paranormal Supercon. And saying those together, I realize how much super wording is in that. And it's it's hard to hard to say, but I like it. Super hard to say. It's definitely super fantastical to be such a part of such a super fantastic, awesome, super duper, you know, con. Or as, as uh, Dustin has renamed it, it's the super duper con. That's right. <laughs> which, which, funny enough, I got a text from him today when I was uh, in studio, and it was a picture of the Hindenburg flying past um, the Empire State Building, and it said, I'm on my way, which is an Oh, joke. my gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> It was. He's excited Thomas, to come. Thomas, did you predict that? Yep. I'm on, uh, uh, I'm on my way. And there's a picture of the, the Hindenburg fly past like the Empire State Building. It's great. It's funny. It, it, it was That's funny. It's definitely funny. And, well, uh, I'm looking forward to it very much. You know, I think uh, it's going to be an awesome time. And, uh, you know, I've got to start packing. I mean, I'm not even packed. I'm still got to go through everything I've ripped apart at Penhurst, so I've got to get all my equipment ready. You know, pack, which I'm a girl, it takes me a while. But, um, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to it, and I hope that everybody goes and secures their tickets for the investigations, because I, you know, I, myself, I just think the investigations are awesome because of the um, small number of people. It really gives a real investigation type feel, and like some of the um, other events that I have uh, been a part of that were, you know, way, had way too many people. You know, it really didn't feel like an investigation. It kind of felt like a walkthrough talking tour. That's definitely a point we have, I did not talk about, and I appreciate you bringing it up, is You'll I did never earlier have on the show over, yeah. You'll never have over 10 people in a group with us. You know, it's something that I don't yeah. believe in. Um, you know, when you do group investigations and public investigations, you know, there's always going to be contamination. Um, but we try to we try to bring that down as much as possible. So we, when I go out and look at a place, we never have where two groups will contaminate each other. So that element yeah. is already thrown out. They're separated and I have to admit, I actually have gotten evidence from investigations that we've done in the group setting atmosphere of a lot of paranormal uh, group investigations was not contaminated. Usually I wouldn't even, like, consider it to be a find, and I actually have some really great finds because the people who were there were just so content on, you know, and just on focus and, you know, they were having a great time, but they were doing exactly what you're supposed to do, and it was a pleasurable to be a part of, because um, I've been a part of some that have just been disaster. So it's very refreshing, well, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. We go out and actually check the place out and do the investigation beforehand, and we also try to find out if we will get contamination. So, like, we went and did the Hemingway, and we physically did the investigation ahead of time. We're like, hey, can we get two groups in here? And we could not. I didn't feel comfortable doing two groups, so we limited it to 16 people in one large room. And if it was some of these other, you know, I, I don't want to say too much, but I just feel like obviously we could make more money and 
do it that way, but it's it's really doesn't give it the great experience because if we had the two groups of 10 to 16 people, you would hear each other and it would contaminate evidence. But now we will only strictly do, you know, that, that's a huge ballroom. So we figured we could fit about 16 people in a pair of coffee demonstration, but we're not having it separated. And so any of our investigations, we, you know, we go and we check it out and we make sure there's no contamination. Um, mm-hmm. And we keep them small. You know, financially, we could make a killing and sell many more tickets, but we just don't do it. And I think it gives it the most legit experience out there. You know, I'm not saying yeah. we're the only ones to do it that way, but there's a lot, you know, there's, no, there's a lot. No, we of, only have 10 seconds, so we are probably almost done. But thank you, everybody. You had to pair on com to get your tickets. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> have a great night. Bye. <laughs>